Hi, everybody. Hello there. Jerry. Linda. We're the village's newcomers. There's our buddy Gizmo. Hi, Giz. <laughs> I have a little treat for him. Oh. There you go. That's why I stay. He doesn't, uh, he works cheap. He doesn't demand very much. <laughs> Those of you that are Gizmo fans will tell you he's 11 and a half years old. So, and he's a full-blooded uh, dachshund. When we bought him, they told us he was going to be a, a cream cream colored dachshund. And actually, he turned out red, just like so many of the others. But he is a great dog. As you all know, very obedient, and he just wants to be with us. We actually don't give him snacks very often, but <laughs> we wanted him to be up front and center while we talk about him. <laughs> Today's Mailbag Monday. Yeah. Doesn't time go by fast when you're retired? It's very quickly. Man, I remember when we're teaching. We, don't, we both enjoyed teaching, but man, the weeks went slow. They did. You know, looking back, it went like that. <laughs> but when you're in the middle of it, and I know you guys feel the same way, whether you're a, whether you're a postman or a, or a teacher, teacher or a banker nurse. or a nurse or <laughs> whatever your job is, Help time kind of drags by sometimes. If you're not to retirement age yet, don't worry. It's coming. Yeah. Be here before you know it. Be here before you know it. I want to give a couple of shout outs. We love getting your mail. Uh, by the way, our, our address is Post Office Box 888, Fruitland Park, Florida, 34731. We got a letter yesterday from Stephanie and Patrick up in Chicago, and uh, we want to give a shout out to you guys. And last week, we got a package. Yes. And Linda picked it up, and it was damaged. It was. It was looked like it had just crushed. We got it home and opened it up, and there's no letter. We don't know who it's from, but we want to thank you for it. They sent us a couple of hats. Oh, so one for Jerry. Good. One for me. One for Linda. Thank you for the hats. Looking good. Man, I look. I, look, I got a long head. You look taller. That's why people look at me and say, "Why the long face?" <laughs> Anyway, thank you for the hats. Yeah. They actually sent two for Linda. This no, is her other no, hat. That's her, his hat. I'm the nice one. <laughs> thank you for those hats, whoever you are. Send us a message and uh, remind us who those came from. Speaking of Gizmo, <clears throat> last night mm. I found a little bag of Reese cups. Is that how y'all say it? Reese cups or is it Reese's cups? Reese or Reese's? Reese's. Tell us. It had about a dozen of those little cups in there. So I opened it, and before you know it, I'd eaten about seven of them. <laughs> so I, took, I left the others on the table beside my chair, and I ran an errand. He ate them all. Yeah, so The rest of the bag. Yeah. <laughs> Paper and all. He, he ate, he he ate, ate the tin foil and all. So um, I don't know. Uh, he, he did make it through the night. No signs of uh, sickness. No. You know, about a month ago, what was it I let him eat? I gave him a grape, didn't I? It was a grape. I gave him a grape, and she got upset, mm -hmm. started studying grapes and dogs, and it, it can kill him. Yeah. So we had to actually... Give him... Um, be a home veterinarian. Yeah, we gave him peroxide. We had to uh, do a little research, and I had to run out and buy some peroxide and came back, and we... We gave him the right amount, I guess, because uh, he threw up all over the place, and there was that little grape, uh, so we didn't have to worry about that, but uh, gosh. Gizmo seems to be okay. Right, and thank goodness, because I was really going to be on the yes. in the doghouse myself. Yes. If went, but I mean, he's already 11 and a half years old. Oh, come on, Jerry. <laughs> Thanks for... Uh, because Jerry is naughty. <laughs> uh, we have about 10 questions today to uh, answer for you. And we'll get right to it. The first one from Richard and Eileen. They want to know how do they find their new house on a map? They evidently bought a house here and they've gone to Google and they're trying to find it and they're having a hard time. Well, the new places here, the newer you are, the harder it's going to be. We have lived here two years this week. And if we still go to Google and search this property, it's sand. It hasn't even been developed yet on the Google Earth map. Wow. So that's difficult. It takes a while to catch up, but it will, and you'll be able to find your property eventually. Uh, we're starting to see that on some of the applications, we can find our neighborhood at this time. But thanks for that question. 
The next question, Gizmo, pay attention here. Come on, he's this is good here. stuff. Looks like he's mad at us. Come on, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I poisoned you. I'm sorry, but you took you took five of my Reese's cups. <laughs> it was back to us. Jim asks, how important is the room or area of the lanai? <laughs> Uh, how important <laughs> Come on. You can do it. I know you can do it. And you guys want to know why we don't let her talk more, huh? <laughs> how important of a room slash area is the Bella Nye? For me, <laughs> and she may differ, it's one of the big deals when you buy a house. I mean, you're in Florida to come for Florida. Yeah. And when you can look out and see Florida, you like that. Right. And lanai's are big glass walls bringing the outdoors in. Or they can be big screened walls. Right. And that's what this question really means. How important is it to glass it in as opposed to having a screen? For me, it's very important. You know, we're fans. We like it here. We love it here, yeah. but the end of May, June, July, August, September, it is hot. Extremely hot. So you're not going to enjoy your lanai during the midday if you don't have a glassed in. Ours is glassed and we have a mini split and we have doors that can slide open if we want the screen effect. So we can open it up, but for us, we can use it 12 months a year as opposed to a screen lanai, which maybe not, but you know what we like the best what? are these houses. Like we went uh -huh. in one the other day, we were asked over, and they had a beautiful window wall in their home, which opened to a lanai, which was open to their swimming pool, right. which was in a bird cage. That mm -hmm. would be nice. They had so many living areas. Uh, that was wonderful. They still had the view from the house outside, which brought the Florida in. And then you could go out on the lanai, enjoy the bird cage, the pool, the sound of their little waterfall. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice. So lanai's very important. Important. That was from Jim and Robin asked the same question. So thanks both of you for that. Now Robin wants to know also, can you sit out in the fresh air without getting bit by mosquitoes? Well, it depends on the time you're out. During the day, you're fine. Early, early morning before 7, you may be bit. I took Gizmo out one time about 6.30, 6, and I got hit a couple times, uh, which surprised me. But And then at night, after 6.30 or 7, they're going to start hitting. So, yeah, there's times when you need to be inside. I don't know. Uh, I don't get bothered by the mosquitoes down here. I think maybe they're just attracted to sweetness, <laughs> you think? But uh, yeah, in the evening, though, I hear them buzzing and flying around. If we sit out, in the, we like to sit in the driveway. Yeah, we do. That's pretty rednecky, isn't it? <laughs> you get your chair and you sit out in the driveway. There's a lot of people that sit in the driveway now we like during it. this yeah. time. Especially this, uh -huh. but mosquitoes are out, but it, it doesn't ruin our quality of life. We just, when it's dark, you know, you, why sit outside? We don't have a fire pit. No. Oh, that's an idea. We can get a fire pit. <laughs> just thinking. Okay. Yeah. But I also heard, this is a tip, someone told me, or I don't know if I can Google or not, but if you eat a banana, if people that eat bananas m more, don't get uh, mosquito bites. That's the next question. Seriously? Uh-huh. Paul <laughs> wants to know, what do you do to protect yourself? We eat bananas all the time. No, we don't. Huh. You know what, by the way, I absolutely hate bananas. He does. I hate them. <laughs> I despise bananas. The texture, the, I just don't like them. So don't send us any bananas, please. But you will eat banana bread. I will eat banana bread. You'll eat flavoring like that. You eat oh, banana pudding? I do eat banana pudding, but I move I move all the bananas away. Oh, he doesn't like the fizzle. But I like the, the uh, vanilla wafers in there. Okay. Is that what's in there? Cookie, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sure this is very, very boring to a lot of you, but thanks for hanging in there if, you, <laughs> if you're still with us. But uh, thanks, Paul, for that question. I heard Skin So Soft works, too. Uh you know, if you don't want to rub that DEET and all that malathion and right. whatever, I, I don't even know what that is. But uh, you, there are some natural ways to uh, discourage mosquitoes because they carry that West Nile virus. And I've heard of one case down here of that. Yeah. 
But I mean, there's 140,000 people here. So anyway, thanks for that question. Chuck, he says, see on the map that there is a landfill in the villages. Is there an issue with the aroma or the noise, etc.? Chuck, we know right where that landfill is. It is right next to a place we're playing golf today. That's right. We're going to play at the Volusia Executive Golf Course. And that landfill is between the Volusia course and the Escambia course. Mm-hmm. No, it's disguised. It has trees. It's, it, you have to actually, you'd have to make a huge effort to see inside. Yeah, you cannot see. But you can, on occasion, smell. And occasion, you will hear the dump trucks moving things. But it's not always. As the crow flies, it's about a mile and a half from here, maybe. Mm-hmm. We've never smelled it here. No. Just but when you're, you're, when you're on that Volusia course, the number two and three T's are right up against it. Mm-hmm. And you can get a whiff of it. Yeah. And it's unpleasant sometimes. Yeah. Not much, but it's yeah. unpleasant. But we don't smell it other than when the wind is just right and we happen to be up on that golf course, so no issue. Um, This is from Matthew. How long before you moved did you both decide this was what you wanted to do? And how long was it for you personally between retirement and moving? So the first part is how long did we decide it was for us? That was pretty soon. A couple months? Well, no, because we had been to Florida many times. Right. And we knew we liked Florida. And we had actually gone on trips looking for something near the beach. Right. So we knew we liked Florida. We wanted something near the beach. Then it kind of drug out. But after we came and saw the villages for the first time, within three weeks, yeah, we owned this home. Hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. <laughs> they gave us this delicious Kool-Aid. Um, <laughs> it's cherry. It was so good. It was really good. <laughs> How long was it between retirement and moving? You're probably going to be surprised. Right. We retired in 2011 and we moved in 2018. Mm -hmm. So almost eight years between retiring and moving. Mm -hmm. We're coming up on our 10 year anniversary of our retirement. Oh my goodness. And those of you that don't think time flies. It does. You wrong. (laughs) Sandra says, this is a great question and one of our most asked questions. What did you bring that you didn't need when you moved? Sandra, we brought a a couch that we didn't need. It was the wrong color when we got our house down here, but it was new. So we did, this is the way we invest, by the way. We buy things high and we sell them low. (laughs) That's how we do it. We were in the cattle business once. We had 30 cows. Yeah. She's a cowgirl. I was. We bought them high, we kept them for years, and we sold them low. Yeah. So that's the way we operate. We couch, have- a couch. What else uh, have we gotten rid of? Oh, a china cabinet. Right. Big, massive china cabinet. Brown furniture. We like the light Florida feel, so brown, clunky furniture. Well, we also, speaking of things you don't need, though, uh, that we brought. Uh, clothes. We brought some a lot of winter clothes and um, heavy winter clothes. I've got some boots, knee high boots, <laughs> and uh, hiking boots because we had a farm, and uh, they were heavy. And during those times, when it was December and January, when we had to go out and break ice at the pond for the cows, blah blah blah, we had a lot of heavy shoes. Brought those. I should not have because you're never going to use them again. When you fly somewhere, you don't want those heavy boots in your suitcases. So, um, no, get rid of all your winter stuff. Yeah, I've got, I've got a pair of ostrich boots, cowboy <laughs> boots, big pointed toes, yeehaw. And uh, what am I going to do? I do want to, I want to put those on with a pair of swim trunks and walk out and uh, surprise all the neighbors one day. Or go line dancing, right? I guess so, but I don't line dance. So <laughs> we'll save that idea. Uh, what else did we bring that we don't use? Uh, we didn't bring many coats. We got rid of coats. Mm-hmm. Uh, like she said, heavy clothes. Yeah. We travel with a backpack now. We put everything <laughs> in a backpack when we go travel. Well, try. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Elaine wants to know, are there opportunities to volunteer in the villages? Well, it just so happens that this morning in the newspaper, there is a nice little list of, of opportunities that you can 
uh, go and do for volunteering. Look how many things you can do. And that's just a small list. I mean, there's many others. And you can do uh, like food pantries. You can work at Bargains and Blessings. Well, there are a lot of secondhand thrift stores. Um, there are opportunities to, if you knit or you crochet, you can make hats for uh, ch children in the hospital or uh, blankets. There are tons of things you can do for volunteering. It's, it's an amazing place to do that. Thanks, Elaine, for that question. Mm -hmm. Ray has a question. He wants to know, why do people move to the villages and then move elsewhere? Oh, great question. Everybody has their own particular situation. People move here because they're at a stage in their life where they want something. What do they want? They want to play golf. Do they want a lot of activities? Do they just want to downsize? You know, a lot of reasons they come here. Maybe money is good and things are rolling. People get here though sometimes and they have a financial problem and they can't afford what they bought. So they move. Or maybe somebody back in Wisconsin uh, became ill and needed you to go back and take care of them. So they move. Or maybe that they, they can't take the heat mm -hmm. and they move. You know, maybe that... Uh, or their partner got sick and ill or uh, passed away. That's what away. I was going to say. Perhaps they, yeah. so they have to go to a nursing home or an assisted living mm -hmm. facility. So lots of different reasons. Most people move here from one house in the villages to another house in the villages. That's mm -hmm the reason that most people move. They either trade up or they trade down. Mm -hmm. And they say it happens three times to everybody. Hopefully not for us, but you never know. Never know. Susan has a good question. She wants to know why do people get so upset about the growth of the villages? That's a good question because I hear it all the time. People built in this area and they say, we were told the last place they were going to build. And of course, now they're moving southward. People up in Sumter Landing said, we were told it was never going to go past 466A. Wow. And, you know, we naturally we get protective of what we have. And some people here already are seeing a shortage of tea times or longer lines at yoga class or stretching class or maybe a wait time to get into the water aerobics. So they're concerned about that. But we have, first of all, Don Wiley does a fantastic job of putting out videos that show you what's being built to accommodate people. With the drones. Yeah, he has a drone. And he does the actual videos of the sites down in the new area. And, and just this week, he had one on new golf courses uh, that are being built. People were afraid there weren't, weren't going to be enough. And it looks like there's a handful mm -hmm. of new golf courses yeah. coming in down that way. So new rec centers, new stores, etc. cetera. Uh, it's been a long time coming. I wouldn't blame the people in Finney for being upset. Some of them have been there three years or more and still don't have a connection to the northern part of the villages and uh, uh, no supermarket or whatever, but, but it's coming. Yeah. All that stuff is coming. And so uh, people just have to be a little bit of pa a little bit patient, and uh, you'll you'll get it. Lori wrote us a funny question, and uh, she said, "Now that you are clearly rock stars, how does it feel? And what do your adult children think of your newfound stardom?" Mm -hmm. First of all, we just regular people. We are. You know, we're doing this. Uh, uh, basically, we it's sort of like a ministry where. We're trying to help people get information before they come to Florida. And uh, this is our way of helping out. It is fun to be recognized. Yeah, we get recognized every other day, <laughs> I'd say. Just today, I was working in the front yard oh. and a car pulled up and uh, yelled at me and said, Jerry. And I went out and talked to them and they're new folks from, uh, from Louisville, Kentucky. Wow. Just moved into Soaring Eagle. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we get these encounters virtually every time we go out and we enjoy it, but stars, no, no. we're just regular folks and uh, we have a good time with it. And what do our children think about it? I think they, they're okay with it. Yeah. They like it. I'm they don't want us to embarrass ourselves. I right. mean, we did that, we did that show where we put on the little smocks oh, at the dermatologist okay. and, that embarrassed, and that embarrassed them quite a bit and <laughs> yeah. they don't like that, but you know, we are, we just are who we are, right? <laughs> 
Here's a question from Roxanne and Paul. Does Linda have any suggestions for controlling frizzy hair? We have a dry climate, so coming into rain and humidity, let's just say it's not going to be pretty. I don't know. Do you? What does she mean? I don't do anything special to help my hair. That's going to do it for Mailbag Monday. Went a little bit long today because I wanted to make sure you knew about this guy and the chocolate fiasco. He's okay, though. And thanks to each and every one of you. We really do appreciate you. Until next time. See you when you get here.